O Lord my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, considering all the works thy hands have made, I've seen the stars, I have heard the rolling thunders, thy work, thy work, your work and your work only throughout the universe display. Then my soul sings a song, how great thou art. You are great and you're greatly to be praised, God. When I stop and consider your handiwork, what you have made, what you've called into existence, what you have allowed to be, you are great, God, and greatly to be praised. And I thank you, God, for the opportunity tonight to be able to lift my hands and say, God, you are God all by yourself. So as your manservant is about to dispense your word, I'm asking you, God, to anoint him like you've never anointed him before. And we tell you thanks for what is about to happen. And we call it done in Jesus' name. Praise ye the Lord for his faithfulness. Praise him for his kindness. Praise him for his blessing. Praise him for his guidance. Praise him for his protection. Praise him for his shelter. Praise him for his shield. Praise him for his buckler. And you could praise him for all that he has done for you. Amen. So tonight we're going to go into the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. But before we go into the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want Jesus to encourage Christ. every single person hearing my voice that is 18 years or older and citizen of the United States and eligible to vote in this upcoming election to please make sure you are registered to vote. For all questions regarding registering absentee ballots, early voting, or even where to vote, please go to vote.org. God bless you, my fellow brothers and sisters. Tonight, we're going to see if we could do some fine-tuning in the book of Genesis chapter 37. And as we might do a little check back, but let's go right into the word and see if we could get something out of it. Um, so we look in Genesis 37 and from verse 18. Genesis 37 and from verse 18. If you have your Bible, just get ready for us to get into the word of God. And tonight's subject is the absolute plan of God. And I'll read from verse 18 for you as we dissect very quick. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Behold, the dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him. Let us kill him. And cast him into some pit, and we will say, Some evil beast had devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dream. What a challenge it faced the young man, Joseph. But I want you to get into your spiritual realms for a moment as we analyze different criteria in Jacob's dream. But as a subject I laid out before you this evening, the absolute God plan. God plan. Number one, I wanted to get in deep into this. The word absolute means a value or principle which is regarded as universal, existing independently independently mean the absolute god is independently not depending upon nobody he is all by himself we set in the foundation and without relation to 
other things. In other words, God does that connected to nothing because he's a source and fountain for all life, breath, and intelligence. Therefore, then, he's independently above everything. Accordingly, then, the absolute God is a beam of all beams. And because of his absoluteness is that which is always has been and which will always be. And this also demonstrates the absoluteness of God, which he demonstrates is omnipotent. And this also that the omnipotence God reveal is greatness. He is the almighty God, the El Shaddai, which means he is all-powerful. And he need no help from nobody. That's why we're going to dig up in Genesis 37 that God need no help from nobody to protect Joseph. And because of his absoluteness and he has all power, he is the absolute one without measures. You cannot measure the living God. He is absolute in his operation. He is absolute in his greatness. He has the absolute power over all and through all. The third point here, the absolute God has total and limited power. Meaning that nothing in the universe, above the universe, beyond the universe, can stop God in his absolute plan. Nothing can throw off his plan. Nothing can derail his plan. If you ask in the book of Psalms 132, 2 and 5, you could read it later. Accordingly then, he is the almighty one. The almighty one. Mighty in power. Therefore, the total preference now and powerfulness, God is free from all potential endurance. The absolute God is free from all movements. You can hinder God in his movements. Oh, no, sir. Because he move according to the wind and he ride upon the clouds of the ear. Oh, yes. The absolute is the cause of his spirit. Therefore, his spirit move in matters, place, and things. It is beyond thoughts, reason, and action. The absolute plan of Jacob's life is moving according to the living God's plan and purpose. Don't stone Jacob, brothers, them, as I get the inspiration. Because they got to push Joseph into the plan of God. This is beyond human senses, our human creeds, our human formality. The absolute is beyond time, number, space, measurement, weight, yes, and quality. It is beyond form, fire, light, and darkness, accordingly to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 6. For God who commanded a light, no. To shine out of darkness. I'm puzzled when I read that portion of scripture. Light shine out of darkness. And therefore, my brother and sister, it shine in our heart. To give the light of knowledge of the glory of the absolute God in the face of Jesus Christ. Nonetheless, the absolute is a fire, an uncreated light. Is light by himself, fire by himself. There, for now, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, in verse 20, listen carefully as we tie the team and get deep. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light, mm -hmm, for light, and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet, whoops, and sweet for bitter. Isaiah 45, verse 7. I, note the word now, the absolute God declared to be the only one that can declare that I. He is the I am that I am that I am that I am. Past, present, and future. And it related here now. I form the light, number one, and create the darkness. I make peace. 
and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, I, the Lord, do all these things. Therefore then, the absolute plan for Jacob, Joseph's life it's foreordained by God himself. As we look into Genesis 37, we find that Joseph's problem begin are the plan of God in operation when Joseph tell his dream. Look good. Joseph's dream provoke more problem to push him into Egypt. The brothers and his father and their who hear the dream create what you call a plan that is in operation. Look good. It is very important that Joseph must tell his dream. Why did he tell his dream, Pastor? Because the plan of the absolute God must come to fulfillment. It as declare as he declares his dream, then the fulfillment begins in its operation. By telling his dream, he made the fulfillment and the arrangement that his life is now at a destiny check. A detrimentary threat. Look with me in the same place in 37 as we read. Listen good. Verse 19. And they said one to another. One to another. They said to all the brothers. Now, listen what this says. Behold, this dreamer cometh. Joseph's dream was the problem to the brother. Why it was a problem? Because they will have to bow. They will ask to bow before Joseph. Joseph's dream was a heavenly revelation. And therefore the terrestrial man cannot angle it. Simeon, Reuben, Judah, and the father and the mother and all that surround Joseph could not angle this heavenly revelation. And I sub submit to you, my brothers and sisters, Joseph himself did not have a knowledge of what this revelation would be consist of. Because the operation of God's plan, uh -huh, in his absoluteness, demonstrated that the dream must push Joseph to get to Egypt. Listen what the Bible says as we go in. Note what it said in verse 20. Come now therefore and let us slay him. Now, killing Joseph does not change the purpose and plan of God. Killing Joseph, the foreordained plan, must continue. And let me sum it to you. They could not kill Joseph because the plan of God is that Joseph must reach Egypt. So therefore they could not kill him. They said, come let us kill him. And note they has their plan too. They, they devised the plan that we will say an evil beast. Notice they declare themselves to be an evil beast. Because they are the one who is committing the act. If they should do it. But we find that the foreordained plan of God for Joseph's life, and not only Joseph's life, for the entire family ties of Joseph. But because it's, the revelation is bigger than their mind, they could not comprehend this deep and searchable revelation. And so the Bible says, look good, note, the big brother Reuben, big brother Reuben said unto them, shed no blood. But Reuben's vice could not stop the purpose of God. Because Reuben is seen from a terrestrial ground that his oxen shed no blood. And he could not convince these guys like Simeon 
Because Simeon loved to use sword. Note what Reuben says to them. He says, and Reuben, Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hand. Verse 21. And said, let us not kill him. Somebody is around to say, let us not kill him. But even though he said that, Reuben said it, he left and gone do his own assignment. But look what happened. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into the pit. Reuben is part of the conspiracy too. Cast him into the pit. Why should I cast my brother into the pit? Note what happened. That is in the wilderness. In other words, Joseph is going to end up into a dark domain. What is that domain? And lay no hands upon him, that he might rid him of their hand, to deliver him to his father. In other words, Reuben had a plan. That if they cast him into the pit, I would try to get him out and deliver Joseph back to his father. Reuben, you could not help this. Because this is bigger than Reuben and bigger than the entire family, bigger than daddy. Daddy didn't even have a clue of the unsearchable plan of God. And so here goes the Bible again. And Reuben, Reuben said, I will deliver him to his father. Note verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was come into his bedroom, that they stripped him. Number one, they robbed him of the coat that his father gave to him. Note, the coat signify leadership. It signify authority. It signify an overseer. According to the great theologian Josephus, he said the coat was all the way down to his ankle. That means he is in authority. So they did not like the authority that Joseph has. My question from my brothers and sisters, why didn't they throw him into the pit, into the coat? They took the coat from him. Strip him of his coat, according to the word of God. And what did they do? <laughs> his coat of many colors, they took it. And cast him into the pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. There was nothing to sustain this young 17-year-old man. Because the absolute plan of God got to kick into operation that the Midianites must come very soon. I want you to take a glimpse of this. The entire brother has a plan to kill. Reuben said no. Judah said no. But look what happened. They could not stop the Midianites from come and watch the Bible as we go deeper. And they sat down to eat bread, the same food that Joseph journeyed a good 60 miles to take to them. The same food. They sit down and eat. And they lift up their eyes and look. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites uh -huh. from Gilead with their camel mm -hmm, bearing spice and balm and mar going to carry it down to Egypt. Joseph time with his family is about to expire. The family ties has been broken. They will not see their brother for a good period of time. But they did not care what happened to Joseph. Their mind made up to sell their brother. 
But this is all about the absolute plan of God and the foreordination of God. That the brother must carry out their operation. Because you see, God has a plan. Man has a plan. But God's plan come out first. Because God's timing from before the foundation of the world. And so here goes what happened. And Judah said, and Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it we lay or slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him. Judah find a good point, but it wasn't good enough to end the, the purpose of God. Stop the plan of God. No, sir. Nothing can thwart the plan of God. Nothing can end the plan because God already planned that Joseph must go to Egypt. And not only go to Egypt, but he will be the savior for the family. A typology, a type of Christ. And so Judah plead, let us sell him. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelite. And let not our hand be upon him. Yes, that's a good point. For he is our brother. Yes, that's a good point. Remember, these brothers, they were one father, but different mother. Yeah, different mother. Joseph and Benjamin as the same mother. Bill that the rest of women them with different mother. And so we note that Joseph journey begin right here. Joseph journey to rescue a nation begin. And so they took Joseph. Then they passed by the median and the merchant and the Jew and lift up Joseph out of the pit. I love it. And sold Joseph to the, to the Ishmaelite for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. As Joseph's journey begins, here goes the separation of brothers, father, mother, and sister. The time has come that Joseph must depart to Egypt under the auspices of the absolute plan of God. My friend, if you are joining us, we are in the book of Genesis chapter 37 and the subject, the absolute plan of God. Sometimes we find that man is planning, but how far can man plan? Because they draw the plan to kill the dreamer, they draw the plan, but God have a way to cancel the plan. So look in your Bible. And Reuben returned. That means Reuben wasn't present when the selling took place, according to the scripture. And Reuben returned unto the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent his clothes. In other words, he start to cry or he start to holler. Whatever form it was, he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I whither shall I go? In other words, as a bigger brother, 
What am I going to tell my father, Jacob? Because the young brother, Joseph, is missing. Note in verse 31 what they did. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goat and dipped the coat in the blood. A symbolic terms that the kid died for Joseph. They dip Joseph's coat into the blood of the kid and say we have the exhibit A, which is the evidence we're taking it home to daddy. He will always look a way out to cover its track. Wickedness always have a plan to guard its track. But behold, their sin shall find them out sooner or later. And watch what the Bible said. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father. Daddy, here is the evidence that this is what we find. But we don't find no, no hand, no feet. He, nothing at all. Only the coat we find. Can you imagine that he must have been frightened? So, is there any way that we could see any the shoes or slip standards that he have on? Because I don't think the wild beast would heed the standards. There was no question maybe daddy might ask. But anyway, anyhow. The absolute plan of God must be done. And so, and so, they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. This have we found. That means, Daddy might should ask them, Did Joseph reach to you with the food that I sent? The Bible did not mention it. Now, whether they, whether be thy son court or not, oh, that could be. But Joseph know, Jacob know exactly the quote that he give to Joseph. And he knew it and said, it is my son court. Praise it the Lord. Daddy know exactly the coat that he gave to his son. And the coat of authority, the coat with power, the coat with dignity and integrity. That's what he handed to his son. And look what happened. Number 34 says, And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loin. Rent is clothes. It's time to weep. It's time to wail. It's time to cry for my son, my 17-year-old son. Uh, Daddy did not have a clue about the absolute plan for Joseph's life. Not a clue. And Jacob rent his clothes and put a cloth upon his loins. And mourn for his son many days. Any dad would mourn based upon the return of the court. Any dad would cry for many days. Because Joseph full of integrity. Joseph full of morality. Joseph was an obedient son. Why you say that, Pastor? Because note, Daddy know that the brothers hate Joseph. But yet, Daddy called him and sent him on the heron to go bring 
these guys lunch or dinner whatever it is daddy lack wisdom but not in the context of the operation plan but it must be done that joseph reach egypt can we go deeper right here in 35 and all his son and all his daughter rose up to comfort him in my theory the sons they were hypocrites they knew exactly what happened may i submit to you i know that the daughters there wasn't there but they conceal what they did evil people hide things wicked people hide and cover things they will laugh with you but underneath look out for the weapon is coming the bible says on all his son rise up mm -hmm. to comfort him but he re he refused to be comfort i salute daddy he know exactly that he lost a gem in the context of what they bring to him. He lost a gold mine. Watch the Bible. And he said, For I will go down into the grave and unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt and to Potiphar and Hafisa of Pharaoh and the captain of God. We will do a next pick up from the scripture a next time. God bless you tonight, my fellow brothers and sisters. I am your host, Pastor Boris from the Gospel Way Deliverance Ministry. If you hear this message, the absolute plan of God. Let me just say this to you, my brothers, my friend, my fellow e-members. Thank you for sharing the link. Please share the link with somebody. But remember this. God has a plan for your life. And because God has a plan for your life, fret not yourself. Worry not yourself. Because he's the absolute God. And therefore then, tonight we're going to just look to the Lord in prayer and bring this portion of service down to its close. God bless you for listening to Gospel Way Deliverance. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and your care. We thank you for all those who are listening. And we ask you even now, Lord, to breathe on every member, every e-member, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and bless your people in Jesus' name. Now may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and forevermore. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister.